Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining us today for the Masters of Science and Operations Management. This is an information session. Uh, glad you could join us today. I have a special guest here that we'll get to in just a moment. But first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Karin Hickenbotham. I'm the program manager for the MSOM department and the graduate certificates. I'll be moderating the session today. If you could please save all questions until the end of the presentation. Uh, if you could not use the raise hand feature in this session, it, it is kind of a distraction to the, to the moderators and presenters. So um, we will get to all questions at the end. Um, and they will all be typed in the chat box uh, again at the end of the presentation. So thank you again for joining and let's go ahead and get started. Um, our MSOM programs, we have a Master of Science in Operations Management, Engineering Management and Engineering. Along with that, we have graduate certificates in Project Management, Lean Six Sigma and Homeland Security. So let's start off with, you know, a lot of students, you know, come up when we're out at recruitment places and say, what is operations management? So simply put, operations management, those professionals, they plan, they lead and manage business operations and deal with complex processes. So operations management uses industrial engineering techniques to enable individuals and organizations to maximize effect effectiveness and make superior decisions. A little bit about our MSOM program, our Masters of Science in, in OM. We were established in 1974. We are the largest graduate program on campus. Uh, we've had over 5,000 students who have graduated and are and prepared to be leaders in their industry. Over 90% of our students are completing the degree fully online. Uh, we have 65 instructors who have real world experience that you can benefit from. And we offer 35 graduate courses each year. So what can you do with an OM degree? There is a lot you can do with an OM degree, depending on your industry, depending on um, if you're looking to move up where you are currently, if you're making a career, you know, change, if you are trying to um, completely, you know, uh, go out of the field that you're in. So you can be an operations manager, you can go into human resources, construction manager, data analyst, project manager, especially with the certificates that we offer, um, going into the finance and banking and investment field, um, nonprofit sector, we have a lot of uh, military folks in our program, so anyone working in the government or a military officer, and then operations research analysts. So again, if what you are doing right now or currently or want to do and is not listed on here, we'd be happy to answer any questions at the end of the presentation that concerns maybe your specific situation. So uh, getting to our special guest, you know, students always ask, what are classes like? What are your classes like? Um, we have courses in several areas such as human resources, data analytics, supply chain, leadership, and then uh, speaking to our three certificates, we have project management, we have Lean Six Sigma, and then Homeland Security. So here today to discuss one of those courses, um, our special topic today is in human behavior analysis with Jeff. He is one of our MSOM instructors, and so he will join me today. And Jeff, I'll let you take over the slides and uh, let you take over. All right, thanks so much, Karen. Uh, appreciate it. So I've been an instructor here since uh, 2007. I really just do two courses uh, in the occasional special uh, research project. But uh, it, the one we have that we're talking about right now, the one thing that I'd probably say is when we talk about human behavior, that's probably not the best name for the course. It was recently rebuilt. And human behavior leads people to think of sort of gross behaviors, uh, things along the line, uh, work styles, or maybe the stuff you deal with in change management. We have a fantastic change management course. We have a fantastic leadership course. Those really touch on the things of human behavior. So we're really looking at renaming this one because it really deals with human factors. Uh, so behaviors are kind of the, the top level. And as you go down the levels at the very bottom end, it starts with really uh, physiological mechanisms of perception. What do you see? How can you see? What are the wave spectrums that you have uh, available to you? Uh, what, how can your eye focus? Uh, 
that sort of thing, the same thing with the ear, the same thing with tactile elements, and then you take it up the from that to uh, the cognitive elements because the perceptual inputs uh, of behavior, ultimately behavior, uh, form thoughts and thoughts, except for reflexes, every behavior begins with a thought. And then from there, we take it to one level of abstraction higher, which is really that uh, organizational inputs and things like that. So this is really human fact. So who is this course for? Uh, I did, we just did this read course this last term. And so I had a lot of good input from students and uh, it's really designed. If you, I don't want to read to you, I'm sure you can all read exceptionally well being literate. I'm pretty, sh pretty sure it's a prerequisite for the program. I don't think you have to have a GRE or a GMAT. Uh, but you do need to be literate because there's a lot of reading involved. So I'll let you read the slide. And like Karen had noted earlier, in terms of who this overall program is for, this is very similar in that you'd be hard pressed to find someone who wouldn't benefit in some way. However, there are certain occupations and certain interests that this would probably be a little more uh, focused on. So in this last course we did, we had several pilots and a lot of pilots in their military career progress through uh, instructor roles and the cockpit in general, terrible classroom. And so understanding things from how night vision goggles operate and how uh, situational awareness works and some of the factors that go into that, they found this exceptionally useful and applicable to both their career as a pilot and their career pathway uh, in the military as a pilot. We had a few folks that were uh, in the industrials and how humans and machines work together, not just robot machines. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of those folks. In fact, one of the students uh, really focused in on robots uh, in her factory location in Texas. But just the examples that we give in course are things like forklifts. Everybody in every industrial situation has forklifts or uh, convey stuff like that. How do people interact with machinery? Um, that's a very applicable part. If you are an office worker and you interact with a computer, and I'm pretty sure this applies to you because you're interacting with one right now, this will apply to you because we get most of our information these days from screens that are in front of us from glowing phosphors or, or things like phosphors uh, that are uh, in front of us from screens of various sizes. And we have uh, factors coming into it like an aging workforce that has uh, uh, progressive and for the most part uh, irreversible but easily addressable eyesight issues. So if we move from one small phone to maybe you need a bigger phone or something like that and the way type is rendered, if you're into communications, this course would be applicable to you. So uh, I know I'll be taking questions and I'm giving a lot of information out. Uh, so just kind of note your questions. I'm going to go probably a little faster through the slides. I'm sure you've had time to read it. So next, the purpose of this course is that while it's really about human factors, there's this other element that's in there that's a very strong element that goes through the course. And that is the application scientific method. Now, if you're a parent and you have children probably around the second grade, maybe even before these days, you have kids that are coming home with papers that are talking about the scientific method. I went to school, I think it was like maybe the fourth grade that we heard that, but nowadays kids are learning things faster. And it seems like something that's really elementary and something that may be beneath us, but this idea of applying the scientific method is huge because of what it represents in the workplace. I will tell you, good ideas are everywhere. They're ubiquitous, they're cheap, they're plentiful. Uh, everybody's got it. What differentiates folks is the ability to bring data uh, to that idea, the ability to model it, to get that idea adopted through decision makers, to communicate it with clarity and succinctness, uh, and then to actually execute the thing. To do that, the scientific method is one way uh, to approach it, where before you even make the idea, you make observations, you think of interesting ideas, you formulate a hypothesis, and this is really the beginning of the um, 
scientific method because this hypothesis that you state is not just, well, it'd be a good idea if we sold more widgets. That's an that's a idea or an example of an idea that's plentiful and ubiquitous, and if they could have done it, they probably would have. So how do you sell more widgets? Well, if did this, then that. So we have the beginning kernel of a, an experiment. If this, then that. And this course uh, really is a, is a current to the human fact. It teaches you to apply that, to uh, make proposals. That, because often if you say, we should sell this item in all of our stores, and you have something in the 4,500 stores, that's a big change. But you can say, let's try selling this item in 10 of the stores that it would seem to make the most sense in. And then you have some basis for getting data, and then you can abstract that to a larger level. So this course is strong in the scientific method as an underlying foundation to how we do it. In terms of uh, scientific method, most of that I've said. It's not just in selling more widgets, it's in how you're going to do it and in executing it. And then uh, companies, these and, and the people that work there, like you and me, we have limited time, talent, and treasure. We just don't have unlimited variables to play with. So it's about resource allocation. And in applying this and communicating the scientific method, what you're going to do is to learn how to communicate key decision makers. And, and those with the, their hands on the purse of time, talent, treasure, to say, if we do this, this is what we believe will happen, and here's why, a robust support. So it's, it's really important in your career to be able to communicate that, and this course focuses on that. A lot of courses have those elements. The course itself uh, is really uh, broken up into sort of four parts. The foundation is that scientific method, we definitely do a little bit of statistics uh, and a little bit of probability in there and, and understanding that. Then we move into that foundational layer, the perceptual systems. The, the eye, the ear, uh, the tactile senses, touch, and that, those sort of things, how we process information in our brains, and then we move on up uh, to cognitive systems, which is the processing of information and decision-making. And then finally, we move to the larger abstraction of things that occur outside your, your periphery, your immediate periphery of your body, into organizational systems. I, I do regret we probably don't spend enough time on that, but the other courses, leadership and change management, really focus on that exceptionally well. So I, I believe this is kind of a nice dub into those courses. So that's what it includes. The uh, the course design, how do we build this? Well, we, we try to apply the same rigor in course design that we do in the stuff that we teach. So uh, for this course, uh, there's there's certainly some of uh, my own philosophies in there. That the exams, I, I don't want you to stress out too much about. There, you have to pay attention. That's, that's a non sequitur. But the exams, if you've been paying attention and staying with the course, they will allow you to demonstrate knowledge in an area that interests you. The areas that this course touches on are, are just immense from aviation, military, uh, aviation, civil, uh, health care, office work, industrial settings, so many different areas. And there is no way that you or I or anybody could be an expert on any of these. And it would do a disservice to you if. I were to only focus on this narrow window of aviation, which is crazy exciting. But uh, if you're in the healthcare or office work or uh, industrial settings, uh, not so much. So the exams, of course, uh, allow you to kind of dive in and demonstrate your knowledge in such a way uh, that you apply to the areas that you're interested in, that you've kind of made a little bit of a deep dive concentration out of for the course. Deliverables are consistent. You have two biggies, two big projects that you work there with because that's uh, what well, in your working life, working with people is part of it. You will achieve your best results working with, through, and uh, for, and with other people. So here is a safe sandbox where you get to practice those skills and hopefully come up with an outcome 
where all of you are so much better than any of you. And many of you are very good, all of you together, and learning on the skills to collaborate effectively in a digital age um, is, is kind of a big deal and is a valuable skill that employers uh, are seeking. So here's your chance to practice. Uh, the discussion board is a big deal. It's uh, a big part of the course, and uh, it's, it's where the class happens and where you kind of engage with your peers and others. Uh, there are, a, we talked about this at the beginning, I'm not going to read for you because a prerequisite for this course is being literate. If you're quick literate, even better because there's a lot of reading. Uh, the primary text through some of the physiology can be a little bit dry and dull, uh, but you need to be exposed to it. Uh, and there's some additional resources in the course. I've put together 37 videos, about half of them I've done. Uh, mine are typically the shorter ones. And then half of them about are experts in different areas and different fields that really bring the course alive in different areas. So uh, what else? Uh, the syllabus uh, will be given to you. And I've got a little bit of a short version of this video uh, I put together is a uh, putting the links up now. So I think that is uh, the end of my section. I'm happy to entertain questions. And I'll turn it back over to you, Karen. Excuse me. All right, Jeff, thank you. And yes, everyone, uh, Jeff will stick around um, for the rest. And is everybody hearing me? Jeff, can you hear me? Thumbs up? Okay. It's telling me I've got bad connection. So I just wanted to make sure before. Uh, so moving on with the rest of the presentation. So we get asked a lot, you know, why Masters of Science and Operations Management? And we have some wonderful testimonials from students who uh, we uh, post on page on our LinkedIn page and Twitter. And again, in the follow up email, those links will be provided to everyone. Um, so you can go in and, and browse at your leisure. But we have some great stuff from some really great students, all from different backgrounds and, you know, going different places and in different industries. Um, so we really encourage you to go in and really uh, just take your time, just, you know, read, read from their experiences because there's, there's some great stories in there. Um, and they'll even tell you why they put program, why they maybe decided to add a certificate, or how it's helping them in their career. So again, great stories. So uh, we do have a special COVID announcement for our admissions, effective in the spring 2021, so spring, summer, and fall of 2021 terms. At this time, we are waiving the GRE for applicants that have a 2.5 to 2.99 undergraduate GPA. You will be admitted with exceptions. However, you will be into the program. Um, applicants with above a 3.0 GPA don't have to worry. It's automatically waived for any term. Uh, once the GRE testing centers do resume, um, this is probably going to be more looking forward to 2022. I can't believe we're actually saying that. Um, but when they do resume normal operations, and students um, do not have difficulty taking the test and standard admission requirements will go back in full effect. So again, why MSOM? So we actually adopted a model because so many of our students, and this will go back into the testimonials too, will tell us when they're done or even during the program that what they learned today, they went and used it tomorrow. And I've spoken to a lot of students that said, man, I read chapter eight last night in this course, and I went in with my boss the next day, and I told him this is what we need to be doing. So we hear those stories a lot. Um, Operations management, it's a high wage, high demand field, you know, spanning numerous industries. So again, we'd be happy to answer any questions uh, concerning your specific um, career path or where you're at now or maybe where you want to go. We are 100% online. We also offer video synchronous classes or evening classes on campus. Currently, those are being limited right now due to COVID. No out-of-state tuition for our domestic students. So we have, it's 303 uh, 0.88 per credit hour. We have a flat $50 technology fee per credit hour. So for a three-hour course, your total is going to be $1,061.64. So we tell students uh, to, uh, you know, to, to bank on average, the whole cost of the total program is going to be between twelve dollars and 15000 you can learn from professors with current and relevant business experience. Uh, these are STEM-oriented courses designed to meet tomorrow's needs. 
There are 10 graduate courses that are required for the program. Uh, we have four core courses that everyone will take and then six electives and you must maintain a 3.0 GPA for graduation. Uh, we do have a flexible plan. Like I said earlier in the presentation, we offer 35 courses a year. So with those, uh, you can create a flexible degree plan that lets you choose the classes that are going to be beneficial um, to you. You can also earn your gra graduate certificate concurrently with taking any extra courses. We'll get to that in just a second. And we are a non-thesis program. Uh, there is a thesis option, but the majority of students, um, what I've seen, uh, choose to do the comprehensive exam, and we'd be happy to answer any questions on that at the end as well. Again, a no GRE GMAT with a 2.5 or better, um, automatically waived for 3.0. You know. How do we calculate that GPA? I, I get a lot of questions from this from students interested in the program. Um, either calculate the last 60 credit hours of your attempted work your undergraduate degree or a cumulative GPA on your conferred bachelor's degree. So um, any questions on that, we'd be happy to clarify. Uh, you can enter from any undergraduate degree. We have degree um, from history to journalism to engineering, um, healthcare. We have a wide variety of folks in the program. We have five eight-week sessions per year. Uh, we have for the fall, we start, um, we have two terms for fall, two for spring, and then we have one summer term. You can complete the program as quickly as one year, or you have up to six years to finish. So the admissions process, our online application is free. Uh, one thing that draws students to um, our program. Uh, the unofficial transcripts, we will accept those for evaluation purposes only. Your official transcripts will still be required. But we will not require them um, for admission purposes only just to evaluate uh, your GPA and uh, prerequisites to the program, which I'll get to in just a second. We also don't require any resume or letters of recommendation or personal statements. So just simply the application, with your transcript, and you're on your way. So prerequisites, um, they don't need to be completed for admission, but they will be the first to be required to, to be taken into the program because it's going to have things that you're going to need to know for, for down the road. So these prerequisites are really to prepare you uh, to be successful in the MSO1 program. We will evaluate your transcripts for, um, for undergraduate equivalency. So you've had um, a business law course that will satisfy for law and ethics. If you've had an accounting course that will also satisfy our industrial cost analysis. Uh, our applied statistics course for the prereq, if you've had a stat course for any discipline, we've had behavioral stats from social sciences, psych stat uh, for engineers or staff, you know, for business majors. So any discipline will actually um, satisfy that. Then our last one is our intro decision support tools. This is our heavy Excel class. We have a proficiency exam available if you think that you could, um, you have enough uh, content and skill and knowledge uh, to move forward in the program without taking the course. Otherwise, that will be an undergraduate pre that will uh, be required. Our application deadlines, so for spring, you have until December 10th uh, to get your application in. It does take a couple weeks for processing, so uh, we do ask that you abide by the deadlines for which term you want to start in. You can also start in spring, but not um, but you can wait till eight week two to start classes in March. And so that deadline isn't until February 18th. And then you can see the remaining dates on the screen there for uh, any summer or fall terms coming up next year. So I mentioned the graduate certificates. We have three. Project management uh, certificate is designed to provide skills to become better project managers and prepare for the PMP certification. Um, we uh, have lots of questions on that, and so we'd be happy to answer any of those. Uh, we have the Lean Six Sigma. Uh, folks want to take the certification exam for that as well, and that is to learn how to eliminate problems and remove waste and, and reduce variation to improve operations. And then lastly, our newest one, but gaining popularity, is our Homeland Security Certificate. This is designed for industry and safety professionals to learn how to mitigate risk. So if you have any questions on that, we've got Dr. Rich Ham with us uh, today, and, and he'd be happy to answer any questions on those. So for the graduate certificates, you only need four classes. Um, you can obtain this as part of your master's degree in the MSO1 program without taking any extra classes, or you can also do it as a standalone. Uh, it, you 
to be admitted into the certificate, you would have to have a 2.5 undergraduate GPA, um, but again, no GRE or GMAT scores will be required for that. Again, the classes will double count, so that means that if you are taking electives or a course that's required for the certificate or for the master's degree, they're going to they're going to double dip into each each program. Uh, the transition, uh, there can be a transition into the MSO program option to not have the GRE again, that's being waived anyway, but that is another avenue that students take um, to uh, see if they want to, you know, continue on with a graduate degree. So I will, uh, we try to make this brief um, so students or uh, potential students, your prospective students here, um, have a chance to ask any questions. If you could please Type those in the chat box, and Carol can help me monitor that. Um, but the, again, the spring 2021 admission application isn't. Uh, we again with the follow-up email, we'll send you several links uh, that will uh, not only to Instructor Bean's uh, information that he referenced earlier, but to links to our social media and to our YouTube channel and all kinds of, of good um, information there. So again, if you have any questions, if you could start typing those in the chat box, um, that would be appreciative. And we want to thank Jeff Bean for coming on and talking about the Human Factor course, and we appreciate his time putting together that presentation. Um, so again, if there's uh, any questions, you can type those in the chat box. If not, uh, we won't hang on here too much longer. Uh, get let everybody get back to their day and possibly their lunch hour and you can follow up with questions um, to me um, individually you can also email the uh, general email address with msom at uark.edu you can also check out all of the information and specifics on courses and course descriptions information on our comprehensive exam um, all that stuff is going to be on our website, which is operations-management.uark.edu. Again, my name is Karen Hickenbotham. Uh, you can email me there, um, and I will also send a follow-up email. So if you have any specific questions that you may think of the rest of the day after hearing all the information we just kind of threw at you, um, I can completely understand. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and um, end the session for today. So we want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank Jeff again for his, uh, his presentation on human behavior analysis. And I have a couple moderators on with me, which I was always appreciative for their time to hang out with me to make sure we've got all of our bases covered. That's Assistant Director uh, Kara Altum and uh, Dr. Rich Ham. So with that, we'll go ahead and end the session. We want to wish everyone uh, a good rest of the day. Thanks for coming. <laughs>